about 1100 years ago two friends went out to hunt and uh, when they went out hunting and uh, he shot the arrow but instead of the arrow finding its mark on the bird it found its mark on the on his friend and the friend died because of the arrow shot now tell me in in what you understand of uh, crime and punishment should he be acquitted because he didn't intend to kill his friend or do you think he had some secret motive to kill his friend and this hunt was just a pretend these are the kind of stories that you will learn today uh, i am pradeep chakravarty and i write about history and making history relevant for our lives today join me today as i tell you a little bit about what was crime and punishment like in medieval india we generally think that today crime and punishment and our laws all came from the british but even 1000 years back 2000 years back even more uh, ever in fact ever since people started living together many people were making mistakes uh, because of greed because of anger and there was always a system of criminal justice now in medieval tamil nadu which is about you know from the 4th 5th century till about the 11th 12th century there are many many inscriptions on temple which talk about what some of these crimes were and how they were punished so even today in tamil nadu if you go to many of the temples there'll be a lot of writing on the wall all of these have nothing to do with the religion of the temple all of them are not even about mythology you know ramayana and mahabharata they're all important records for the community that were mentioned on the temple walls and some of these in fact many of these are actually criminal judgments and justices the rulings that were given uh, that were important for the village so from many of these inscriptions we can get a certain sense of what were the kind of crimes for which people were punished and what were the kind of crimes that people said it's okay these things happen let's leave it and let's miss it out so incidentally in this case um the committee met the committee of the elders in the village they met and by the way the elders are not just the old people they were also people who knew the dharma shastras the dharma shastras are our traditional law books the old law books of what is right what is wrong what is the punishments that we need to give and they heard this case out in great detail and they finally decided that the friend had shot his other friend to death by mistake and he was asked to light a lamp in the local temple and pray for the friend and that's how the case got sorted out but in many many other instances we can find some broad patterns and that's what i'm going to tell you today one pattern that we can see is the higher the caste of the person the more stricter the punishment was the understanding of the assumption being that the higher the caste of the person the more educated he will be or she will be and the more educated he or she will be the more sure they need to know what is right and what is wrong they were not supposed to be making mistakes at all they were supposed to be the people who would check whether other people were following rules and regulations so if they themselves didn't follow rules and regulations things wouldn't work out well for the community which meant therefore that punishments for them were very strict um the other set of punishments you will see is the the toughest crimes which had the harshest punishment were crimes that were committed against the government and in this case the government was not just the king the government was also the local temple because in those days anything that we expect from the government today the temple did for the local community so god equal king king equal god palace equal temple temple equal palace uh, we have many cases where the king's auditors found out that the temple authorities had stolen money uh in fact we even have one case where there was a lot of gold coins kept inside the box um and when the king's audit came they found out that not only were the gold coins there were about 60 gold coins that were missing but the box had been closed the lock had been applied and on top of the lock a seal had been applied so see they put wax and they put a stamp all of this had been there but the coins didn't tally and of course then therefore the watchman was also held guilty one of the temple priests were held guilty and they had an enquiry and in the enquiry that they confessed that they were guilty and the harshest punishment were given to them which is two things one is their private property was taken away from them it was sold and whatever their money they owed to the temple was given back 
and their family members also their property was taken that was sold away and the, the really harsh punishment that was given to them was they were excommunicated from the village the worst punishment that you get could get in those days was you would be asked to leave the village and not settle down in many other villages close by